going to be looking at how to configure a business process flow in Dynamics today. And I appreciate you spending some time with me. So let's get into it. We're going to come here first to our gear icon and select advanced settings. From advanced settings, click the drop down here to settings, click customizations, and then next customize the system. As it's loading, I'll say that you could also click solutions if you've created a solution, which is, is essentially a subset of the entities or pieces within dynamics that you want to configure. Uh, but from here, we can still access processes. So once you've clicked processes, you'll notice there's a, a list of out of the box business process flows, workflows, actions, different types that again come pre-built that I could then configure or I can design and create my own business process flows. And again, that's what we're going to do in this video is to create a new business process flow. So I'm going to select new. And from there, based on what I'm using this business process flow, what entity it's for, any of those things, I'd want to create a, a, a unique name that is helpful in determining or differentiating this business process flow from say any other flows that I've created or maybe using within Dynamics. So today we're going to say test RFP business process flow. Next, hit this drop down here for category. That's where you'll notice you're determining which type. And so we'll say business process flow. And then which entity do I want to start this business process flow on? A couple of options that we have here is we can actually have a business process flow that starts on one entity and moves to another. Of course, for example, out of the box we have a lead to opportunity business process flow that goes from hey I started a lead I qualify that lead it moves that lead then to an opportunity and then I may have multiple stages within the opportunity that I'm working that sell through until I ultimately close it as one or lost so that's what we're going to do today but for example I could select account I could select contact maybe I have an, an onboarding process for my contacts that I want to go through to determine what type of contact they are or if they actually become a contact or, or remain an active contact. So I could have a business process flow for any of the out of the box entities as well as any custom entities I create. And then I activate that business process flow and it can then be used to help, to help me with whatever my standardized processes are for any of my entities within Dynamics. But again, for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to start from a lead and have multiple stages from lead to opportunity to close. So I'm going to hit my keyboard, I'm going to hit L, it'll just help me get down to lead quicker. Select lead, again that's just saying hey this business process flow starts at the lead level and then I'll move to an opportunity from then based on the criteria that I set up. So I'll select OK. It's going to present me with my business process flow editor, right? It's just a simple drag and drop point and click type configuration here which is very nice. I don't need to be a developer, I don't need to know any code to come in here and create multiple stages in my business process flow. I can even bring in some branching logic, some conditional logic. So we'll look at that and I'll show you how to, how to create a condition to determine, hey, based on what I do in one stage, what, what route does it take me in my business process flow? And so we'll look at that. A couple pieces in here, I'm going to be using my components tab and my properties tab so these are the different items that I can drag and drop in to my business process flow so let's say hey I, I know I'm gonna have multiple stages so we'll start with these I know I want a, a different type of, of logic some branching that occurs after this second stage uh, from that I'll either go to my final stage or I'm gonna come down here and say that I go to two additional stages. And so then I can figure those and again based on the condition that I set up which will be triggered at this stage I'm either going to go this down this path or my logic will change and it'll give me these additional fields or not fields but but uh, stage options again based on this trigger. So first things first to configure all this you can see everything that I brought in here starts at a lead. It's telling me what entity type up here where it says lead and just new stage. So I obviously want to change some of that and actually define what these stages are. So by highlighting the stage, you'll notice that it gives me my properties tab. What's the display name? That's where we're going to double click or just highlight that. And we're going to call this prospecting. I'm going to hit apply. 
that's important to remember hitting apply or at least hitting save because if I did not do that then I click over here in this this stage or made some some other changes and didn't hit apply those changes don't take effect and then I have to redo some of that work but you can see I hit apply prospecting is the display name and now it made that change right here so I know that's the prospecting stage so we'll do that same thing for these other stages when we get to them I'm gonna come in here and when you hit the details drop down you'll notice there's a single data step that it provides every stage that I create has to have a minimum of one data step so by default I have to have at least one data step I can have multiple All right, and I can bring those in again from my components drag and drop place it there select the one that I want to configure in my properties tab then I can uh, define the step name and what that data field is this drop down contains all the fields on my lead entity any fields that I've created any that are out of the box any custom fields I've created and I can bring those fields in to my business process flow so I'm just gonna stick with these simple ones out of the box here at the top existing contact existing account hit apply notice that change takes effect come here do the same thing existing account on this one and hit apply now if those changes have been made and saved here I can reorder let's say hey I want an existing contact to be the second option just hit that arrow drops it down or I can drag and move it around if I were to have you know six or seven of these and I want to just drag and, and drop and, and manipulate it that way so once I have that again I'll hit apply Let me hit the save real quick just to ensure that those changes are, are held and that stage Again, depending on how many steps I need and what it needs to be called, looks like I'm done there and I can move on to this next stage. What it's done is, again, it's, it's labeled these as a lead. So it thinks my next stage should be a lead as well until I make a change. So I'm going to come here to Entity. And again, just use my keyboard shortcut, hit the letter O. I want it, my next stage to be an opportunity and no longer a lead. And so I can define what that stage name is. And we're going to say that's the develop stage. Select apply and it changed both what type of entity it is in this stage and the name. So it's an opportunity now upon qualifying here, it'll create an opportunity and it'll call that, so that first stage within the opportunity develop. And again, once we get this published and activated, we'll be able to see what that looks like as we move through those different steps. Similarly, hit that drop down. There's my one uh, default data step. I'll come down here, I created a, a field called request RFP or requires sorry requires RFP just for an example here and this just a simple boolean field a yes no field and that'll help us determine or, or be the trigger for our logic here if it's if it's no great we just move on to our final stage if it's yes then it's going to come down here and I need to complete these, these stages that we go through so that's all done you'll notice once I selected the data field and hit apply by default it will create the stage or excuse me the step name will be the data field name I could change that and make any adjustments if I needed but maybe it makes sense to have that name be the same of course that's why it defaults for that purpose and then if I needed to bring in additional uh, data steps right I can do that I will highlight here that depending on requirement or how you like your business process flow to function I'll select this data step and you'll notice there's a box here for required. If I check that box and apply and save that, once I'm using this business process flow, that step or this field has to be filled out. It has to contain data. I have to show that I've entered something there, whether it's a date, whether it's a, an option set that I've selected an option, if it's an integer field and I've entered a number, uh, whatever that may be, however that field functions, if I've made it required, I have to show that I've entered data to move on. So it'll give me a little red asterisk on my end user experience. And again, in order to move from develop to whatever that next stage is, if this is a required field, I have to fill it out or prevent me from moving on. I'm gonna uncheck the box though. We don't wanna apply that in this instance, but that may be a beneficial item to, to understand. To define the logic here, I'll check the, or I'll select the conditional branch box. And then it gives me my rules. I can set up multiple rules. So what I want this to do, or the way I want this rule to, to function is, again, based on that field, uh, requires RFP. If it does require an RFP, maybe I have multiple stages. Maybe I have an RFP stage and then a close stage versus just going from develop to close, right? That may be very, you know, overly simplified here, but just as an example, that's what we're going to do. So I hit the field right here. 
navigate to my requires RFP, and then when it equals no, another checkbox like that's what it when it equals that, that's where I'm going is this direction. If it if it doesn't meet that criteria, that's when it takes me down another path. So I'll say apply, and then I can go and configure the rest of these. And then based on how we've set that up, we can go and, and test that and ensure that we've created that business process flow successfully. So I'll come here, do similarly what we did uh, with the develop stage. It's still an opportunity at this point, right? It will be in, in the rest of these stages, and I want this to be my close stage. So I'll hit apply. At this point, again, I have to define that, that data step. I have to have a, at least one data step and I have to select the field, uh, and I'm going to navigate down here to, uh, we'll be, be pretty generic here and just say send a thank you note upon, upon closing. Something simple like that. Apply. I'll hit save one more time. Just make sure everything we've done has saved along the way. So the wheels stop turning. We'll come here and define these, these final two steps or stages. So again, opportunity, just like that. This is going to be my RFP stage. Maybe I have multiple steps within the RFP stage. I think that we've somewhere wrong, along the way we've, we've created a couple of these. So uh, related to RFP. So let's say, hey, if it is, if it does require RFP, then we need to receive that RFP. So there's there's an applicable field. We'll save that. Uh, we'll come down here and say for my my next one, get there a little quicker, and we'll say just RFP reviewed. And again, I probably have additional steps that I would take there. What we'll do here is this will make these required, and then we can see how that interacts on, on the once this is activated and live, how that requirement field would work. Oh, didn't, I didn't hit apply, so it didn't capture that save make sure those changes take effect and then our final stage we'll just call that an additional that's just, that's just a, a closed stage just like the other one was opportunity apply define that Sending that same thank you note when we get to that point, right? So it can kind of be a little bit of redundancy there, but at least it's telling me, hey, I'm going down this path. I have less things to complete or accomplish versus if RFP is requested, I have additional steps or stages to go through. So we'll save that. You'll notice that it's saying save validation successful upon completion. So if you hit save, it's going to validate and make sure that you're not leaving anything out, right? If I didn't have a data step defined or something, it's going to flag that or, or recognize that and highlight it and say, hey, in this stage, you, you haven't done enough here. There's still some some open requirements in order to to create this. If I needed to go back and change the name, I could. You can just hit that drop down and these give you the details. Hey, the primary entity, where are we starting? Again, it's a lead, that category that we selected. Who owns this? Who's the creator of this particular process? And then the schema name, I could go back and change this process name, right, in terms of searching for that. But at the schema name that it was given, I can't go go back and change that once it's created without, you know, simply deleting and and recreating if uh, if it if I did in fact need to change that. So that point, right, depending on how how long this flow is, I will mention that you can have up to 30 stages. So we're well under that, right, with one, two, three, four, five stages here. But if you had branching logic and, and it was pretty sophisticated, you could see that you could get upward of you know 20, close to 30 stages potentially. But maybe in that point or that instance, it's worth creating not a single business process flow, but maybe multiple uh, business process flows because you can use multiple flows or have multiple flows activated. And then when you're actually using those, you can go up to your ribbon, uh, which I'll show and select which process you want to use. But again, for this purpose, we'll remember that this is called our test uh, RFP business process flow. We've saved. Final step is to activate. It's going to ask us if we do want to activate. Yes, we do. All right, there we go. It's been activated. All right, you, 
can see now it's changed. If I need to come back and make adjustments to this, I do need to deactivate, make my adjustments or edits, and then reactivate. But I can make, make changes to this business process flow even upon saving it and activating it. I can go back and make changes later. So I'll exit out of here. I'm back to this, this screen. But if I were to go and look for that, if I'm in Sales Hub, I'm probably not going to find that. I will refresh. I need to actually add this business process flow to my sitemap. So that's one step that, hey, I've created it. Now I want to go use it. If I come to lead, I should be able to go into a lead and find that business process flow. But until I go to Sales Hub, come over here and hit more options, open an app designer, just a couple more steps to get this business process flow activated and available. I'll come here to, to the business process flows and we're going to add one here. So I just need to scroll down right here or the list that I can add, but in my sales hub app experience until I add this new business, newly created business process flow, it won't show up um, and be available to use. So we're going to come in here and, oh, we called it test RFP. There we go. So there it is. I select, say, hey, let's save. We're going to publish and play this app, and then I should be able to use it from there. I can validate and make sure that it's, uh, in fact, everything's working. Don't worry about doing that right now. Come here to play. Sales Accelerator installed just as a preview, but uh, ignore that. We'll come down here to leads. I'll go in and create a new lead. New RFP test lead. Save. And I'm gonna have more options up here on my ribbon once this loads. That's where I could come here to process. You can see, hey, I have I have one that, that's default. And that's where I could set up which one do I want to be the default prospect lead quote close. That doesn't look like what we created. So I'll come here to process, switch process. Again, based on how many I have running and which ones I have activated, uh, I could set one again as the default. So it's at the top of the list. But I'm going to come here and check the box, test RFP business process flow, right, that we created. Say OK. And then there you can see that it made that adjustment here, those stages. So in order to test this, let's go ahead and qualify. We'll qualify this lead, right? There's maybe a couple steps I needed to follow. Or maybe I need to fill out this form a little more. But at this point, I think we're ready. We can qualify just for the sake of the demo here. Great, everything was successful. And then I came here to develop, right? And when RFP requirement equals, you know, R requires RFP is a no, then great, I just have a single step that I can move to. When I say yes, that's when that logic that I created, oh, I actually have an RFP stage now to go through. So great, let's move to that next stage. And then you can see within RFP, we have RFP received, RFP reviewed, right? And until I fill that out, again, depending on how this field functions, it probably would be a better fit to actually have a an option set here rather than a multi-select, or sorry, a a two option field or a boolean field because this already has data in it there's already something there and my requirement doesn't mean that it has to say yes it just if i if i check the box for required it just means there needs to be data so again probably want to look at configuring that field if it's a required field to operate in a way that it's open there's no data the user has to go in and actually enter something but for this purpose we'll say yes the rfp was received uh, was it reviewed yes and we can move to our next stage of close and then send our thank you note, great, uh, close as one, and then we're done. So that's the process of creating a business process flow, defining the stages, and bringing that in to your sales hub experience upon creating it. So thank you for joining me on today's video, and best of success using Dynamics 365.